I had the most marvelous biology teacher, Dr. Fraser, and I simply adored him because he had huge passion for his subject and he gave you his full attention. And I just loved being in his classes. And he sent me off to the local hospital for um, a day, a couple of days of work experience. And I came back to the school and I said to him, that's what I want to do, Dr. Fraser. I want to be a medical laboratory technician, which is what I'd gone away. And he said, no, you're not. You're going to university. And I, I didn't know that I could because nobody in my family had ever gone to university before. And I didn't really know what it meant. But because I idolized him because he was such a fantastic teacher, if he said I was going, then I had to go. I thought, right, now's the time. I'm a bit older, a bit wiser. I was 22 by this point. And I thought, right, I want to go to uni, see what all the fuss is about. And that's what I did. And I basically quit my job. <laughs> and at that point, um, you know, I was earning good money um, and I quit my job and I said, that's it. I'm going to uni. And I decided physics was the one at high school that I was really good at and I loved as a subject. I also loved English, but I didn't want to go into languages, arts. I wanted to get into a STEM degree. So I applied to Glasgow Uni. And I did my, um, I did, I get into a degree in physics. Science is creative. It's not, you know, people tend to think art is creative and science isn't. And that's just, I remember I was at an event with uh, a friend of mine, um, Alan Alda is an actor, uh, but also quite interested in science. Uh, and he, he got up in, at that event and said something like art and he's an actor, art and drama require great precision and science requires great creativity. And it was just a wonderful turn on things because people tend to think the opposite and the point is they all, all all fields of human activity require both and science and the creativity science relies on creativity it also requires on uh, uh, you know questioning and stumbling blocks and uh, lots of things but that that's really common to the human experience in general i see a lot of similarities as well between music and stem um i think there is a tendency to think that you have to choose between the arts and science Whereas I think they're quite heavily interlinked. If you think about music, it's made up of sound waves. And we talk about how we communicate through those different sound waves and through other things as well. But that's not actually too far away from some concepts in engineering and communication and thinking about waves there. Um, so there's a lot of crossover. And then I think also engineering can be thought of as ways to create a solution to a problem. Um, where, you know, music and the arts are very creative in themselves. So, yeah, I definitely think there's a lot more that links them than separates them. Mathematics is the same across, whether you're in Haiti, America, Japan, Canada, um, or across the river where you are, um, Stuart, like mathematics is the same. So that is always easy to pick up and to um, sort of articulate in a sense. And technology is universal. The way your iPhone works in America is the same way it works the, all around the world. So with a love for mathematics and a love for technology, I was just able to pretty much have some form of self-worth or some form of self-understanding in the classroom. And then from those who working with small group collaborations or whole class learning, I was able to pick up the, learn the rest of the skills. So that is your science, your engineering, um, the rest of the STEM or the STEAM platform. I wrote a resource probably about three years ago now called Engineering Fairy Tales, which can be delivered to three year olds all the way through to Key Stage 3. Um, and it is based around eight traditional tales. And I've rewritten each of the traditional tales so that the fairy tale character has a STEM problem that needs solving. And then the idea is that the students will work in a team um, as, as engineers and scientists to design and develop a contraption or a solution to the problem that that fairy tale character has. In school, as well, when they grow up, the teachers can encourage them, like, you know, teach them more about the science behind the climate change activities, you know, what, what is really happening. So what we can we do to prevent it, to reduce the global greenhouse gas emissions, for example. So the science can be taught at school, whereas the practical side, the small things, the parents can teach them and inspire them to do it in their own homes. I think one of the biggest changes in, in ecology is the increasing use of technologies. In ecology, we use a lot of um, uh, tracking devices where we can um, 
we can put a, a transmitter or a tracker onto an animal um, uh, and, and that could be an animal as big as a, a polar bear or an elephant or as small as a, a bumblebee. We can put trackers on different types of trackers on now. And um, the technology for that has really changed even in the, even in the last 10 years. Um, you know, we can use satellite GPS tags and we can really actually follow almost in real time the movements of um, individuals of a specific species. To work with Jurassic World is, you know, it's, it's um, surreal, act, really. That's probably the best word to use. It's really, it's obviously it's fun. It's very rewarding. And it's kind of crazy to think about it because growing up, you know, with my brother, he was such a Jurassic Park fan. And then I was too, you know, once I became interested in dinosaurs, I'd seen all the films so many times. And so when the, the director of the, the, the Jurassic World series, Colin Trevorrow, he just happened to read my book. Uh, he read The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, the book you have behind you there. He picked it up, I don't know, in an airport, at a bookshop, he read it. I guess he liked it, he got in touch. He said, hey, I'm making another film in the series. I'd like some help in making the dinosaurs realistic. Uh, when he sent that email, I, I thought it was a joke, to be honest. I thought it was somebody <laughs> playing a prank on me, so I needed to look into it. And then it turned out that, oh my goodness, this really is him. Follow the thing that is setting fire to you. If there's something that is going, oh, I really want to find out about that. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, well, that's not the way to go. Because it's the thing you're going to be best at. And, and whether that's, you know, um putting satellites in space or making pancakes i really don't care you can be the best at whatever you do but, but the key ingredient is your enthusiasm and your interest